Mr. How do you like the coffee? Well, a nice espresso now would be fantastic. So just a normal cafe normale, no? We're here at the Allianz Stadium, a beautiful setting after two lovely and memorable matches. When you look at the grass, the stadium, the surrounds, how much do you feel at home? It's become, it's become very much a, a second home. Uh, it's, uh, it feels so warm, so, uh, so entertaining. You know the 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 warmth and the and the and the hospitality that's here has become uh, an amazing uh, an amazing adventure. Uh, so I suppose it has become like a second home. Um, and uh, you know at the moment uh, we're having some memorable nights here. So on on the pitch and I've seen some off the pitch also in regards to uh, watching some of the men's team uh, play. But uh, when you come here, there's a, there's a special feeling. There's there's something that. Um, you can't really you can't really explain. It's just got something about it from you know from the atmosphere, from the the compactness of the of the stadium, and uh, and just to be in this historic setting because you know the the beauty of this club is you walk around and you just see all the amazing players on the uh, on the uh, on the wall, and you see all the trophies, and you see the the success, and it just means a lot. It means a lot. Looking back at those games against Chelsea and Wolfsburg, what do you take away from that experience as a whole? Obviously, it's a massive step forward for women's football playing at such a stadium with the fans there. Sure. What do you take away from it? Well, I suppose the um, the importance of playing the games against uh, Chelsea and uh, and Wolfsburg and and being in the in the Champions League is is I suppose where is is the benchmark for us. It's sort of like where we need to be. We need to be um, competing with the top echelon of of, of European football. Um, and the only way we're going to grow is pay, playing against the best. And um, you know we were. Lucky, a lot of people will probably say we were we were not so lucky drawing two of the top top teams in the world um, in, our, in our group. Uh, we've definitely got a difficult a difficult assignment to go through to the next round. But look, the reality is is that um, you know the 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 idea was to bench ourselves and give ourselves a, a I suppose a marker of where we're at and where we want to be and where we want to go and and why not do it against the best? And um, and I think we've we've shown so far that. Um, you know, with a little bit of growth and a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, understanding and and being exposed to these sort of games, that we will um, we will achieve what we want to achieve. And speaking about being feeling at home, and obviously, we've got to understand a bit about you as a coach. But how are you away from the field? What is Joe like off the field when the mind is switched off from coaching? What is Joe like off the field? Wow, great question. Um, I, I suppose. Uh, I'm someone that um, I, I, I try to bring every little bit of positivity out of every situation. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I have an important role um, as, as a head coach of, a, of, of amazing athletes and, and obviously the responsibility of being at this great organisation. So, so I, think, I think I try to bring me, I try to bring a positivity, I try to bring um, a place where people want to come uh, I try to bring a place where people want to want to enjoy themselves and want to be the best that they can be. Um, um, I'm one for you know pushing the boundaries. I want I want everyone to 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 be better than me. I, I, I always sort of try to surround myself by staff and people who are better than me in in, the, in those in the sense of that word. But um, I suppose those those factors also come into play when I'm I'm on my own. I'm I'm, I'm myself. Um, um, just, just enjoy every moment. You know, I've been given this amazing gift as a person. You know, with an amazing family, a, a magnificent wife, and great kids, and and um, you know, there, there's no need for me to, you know, not not be the best that I can be. And um, and hopefully, you know, that 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 um, how can I put it? That personality oozes and 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 feeds off other people that are around me. Um, so so yeah, I, I just cherish every every moment that I've got. You know. Being, being, or being, having been given this privilege, um, 
And um, yeah, um, I think uh, just with honesty and humility and, uh, and fun. And before switching on that coaching hat in the morning, how, what is your daily routine? What, do you have any affirmations or things you say to yourself? How do you start today? Maybe even with a cup of coffee or breakfast with your wife? How do you go about it? Well, funnily enough, the first thing that I do is, uh, and, and, and this is not because I'm doing a, 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 a Lovatz um, spot, but I, I actually wake up, I've got my little uh, mocha cafetiera, and, and it, it is Lovatza coffee, I'll be honest with you. I use Lovatza coffee and I make my little, my little two-cup uh, mocha. That's, that's the first thing. So that, that's sort of, and it's sort of automatic. I don't know if I'm, I'm sleepy or, or what. I just sort of get out of bed and it's just sort of like a, uh, I'm, I'm like on a train track straight to the straight to the stove, um, but look, I think the the best thing is 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 for me is um, is to make. I, I I live I live with one motto, and that's not to make it just a training session. I want to make it the training session. So, or the day of work. I don't want to make it just another day of work. Um, so. I look to make sure that I've I've got everything in place and make sure that um, I've I've done my little bit for the day, but also um, be prepared for the things that might happen during the day. So, so yeah, I, I live on I live on that motto: don't make it just a day because it's just another day. Make it the day. So I try to I try to give myself that sort of uh, that sort of uh, push uh, when I wake up. It's a great motto to have, and let's touch a little bit obvious, obviously about your family. Um, when you're not on the road, how do you pass your time with your family? Any day live going into the center of Torino or maybe in the Wineland, how would you pass your days? Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky that um, uh, I've got, I've got a, an amazing wife who, who wants to do everything in, in, in five hours. So, so passing, passing time is never an issue. She'll always, uh, if she knows that there's a day off or there's um, you know, half a day off or I'm coming home early from from training or work, uh, she'll have something ready for me. Oh, we've got to try this restaurant, or we've got to go to this winery, or we've got to we've got to go and visit this town, or we've got to go and visit that town. So, so um, my wife is a, is an amazing social organizer in terms of finding these little nuances of, of of getting away. But I love it too. I love to 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 push every every boundary in terms of um, exploring. Um, you know this wonderful country, uh, but this amazing city. Um, I think uh, sometimes uh, it's it's quite interesting because uh, I I don't think even you know the people here know what they've got. You know, it's there's so much in terms of museums, in terms of history, in terms of culture, in terms of just little things, just discovering new cafes, new bars, new restaurants, and and things like that. So. Put it this way, uh, Ros, there's, there's not one day that's, uh, that's not full of, of some sort of adventure or something. We want to discover as much as we can while I've, while I've been given this privilege and this, this opportunity to be at this wonderful, uh, wonderful club and wonderful city. Brilliant. And of course, you come from an Italian family, Italian background. How has that helped you settle into Italy? And obviously, it must have been a lifelong dream to come here and work here. Yeah, coming from uh, from Italian background, you know, obviously uh, it's uh, it's it's quite amazing, and uh, and obviously you you get to see the two different the different aspects the the Italian immigrant and the Italian how the Italian is. So, you know, my parents left in the in the fifties. Um, they, they they went to Australia, which was you know not close, um, and had and had to start a new life and had to start a new um, a new uh, a new way of thinking, a new way of uh, doing things. They had to assimilate. So I think, I think I'm lucky because I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the best of an amazing culture, which is, which is Italian culture, but I've also been able to, to assimilate to other, other cultures and understand what it is you know, to be Australian through an English culture. Uh, my work has brought me around the world, so even to understand other cultures, but um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, for me to hide to say that I'm very proud to be Italian. Um, I know I was born in Australia, but uh, being Italian is something very, very special. And, um, you know, to be here again, as I said, it's, it's an amazing privilege. And to be able to, to do what I love at this amazing place is, uh, is incredible. And how did your Italian upbringing influence your love for football and get into football? It's actually a really good question because I don't I I didn't grow up in a football family like we weren't um, we weren't big like my father never really followed football my brothers were sort of yeah they they followed a little bit of football um, it was more my uncle my uncle was um, he was um, very much into his sport 
and very much into uh, the Italianisms of sport. And you know, he 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 followed um, my um, my mum in terms of um, migrating. And uh, it started when I was young. I was I would have been I think about seven or eight. And there was an Italian cinema in Melbourne, which used to show Italian films, um, you know, and, and news reels, but on the old, uh, you know, what is it, thirty, you know, th that, that news reel sort of thing. And every once in a while, there'd be a game that actually send a game, like Juve Napoli, or and it was like, you know, six to eight weeks behind, even three, four months behind. But you'd go and just watch the game on on uh, on thirty five mil sort of on roll, on, like an, on a big cinema. And he used to take me. He used to take me, and um, I think the love for, for the game. And I actually remember the first game was was Napoli Juve. It was have been you know nineteen seventy seven, nineteen seventy eight, somewhere there. And I remember watching it on in a, in a cinema, on on the big screen. You of course played yourself. How much would you say your playing style matches your coaching style, if at all? Very much. Um, I think the actual football, but the the actual characteristics probably don't match. And, and what I mean by that, you know, in terms of having a little bit of a playing history, is that I very much, the design of the game, the tactics, the, the structure, the organisation really intrigued me, but I was very, um, very lazy as a player. So I don't want to give those, those attributes to, uh, to my players. I want my players to be very, um, very committed in terms of what they need to do. Look, different times, different different mechanisms, uh, different uh, structures, I suppose. Um, um, but um, yeah, look, my my playing my playing style or my what I loved about the game probably influences the way I coach quite a lot. You, of course, retired at, at a relatively young age, if I'm not mistaken, 28 years old. Why was that? Interesting. I, I, I retired um, quite young. I think I was 28, 29. Um, I, I'd just come back from, from Italy and, and I, I fell out of love with the game. I actually just fell out of love with, with playing. I, I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't... Um, I wasn't um, I, and I think it was probably that, that player commitment and, and political issues that you need surrounding being a player and so on and so on and and I just fell out of love with the game and and that's and that and that's it's as simple as that um, I fell out of love probably with playing the game but um, the how can I put it the, um, uh, the the love for the game just just sort of diverted it went from playing into into coaching which is something that I really loved and uh, and I think I love the fact that you, as the leader of a team or the or the person that puts puts all these people together, can actually influence some some lives and influence things. And uh, and I think I, I I enjoyed that. And why women's football? It's 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 a, it's an interesting question, uh, but a question that that I answer with um, with all honesty that it's football. I don't look at it. I don't look at it. Uh, either way, um, I've been lucky enough to have grown up in men's football, went into women's football, gone back into men's football, now back in women's football. So for me, the only difference is, well, probably two things, obviously the, the physiological differences, which you need to adapt, um, and obviously the exposure of, of the finances and commercial, commerciality of the game. I mean, they're the only two different differences, really. Um, but when we talk football, we talk about the same tactics, we talk about the same load management, we talk about the same game, we talk about everything. The goals are the same, the dimensions are the same, the ball's round, put it in the net. Girls can do it just as well as men. Brilliant. And of what excites you about women's football? Because you've obviously seen it grow massively. Mm. What, what excites you in the, pros the prospect of, of football, women's football? I suppose the, the, the exciting... Uh, situation of, of women's football at the moment is that it can go it can go anywhere and I like that I like the fact that it hasn't got a it hasn't got a point where it's going to hit and it's going to stop we can take we can take this you know here we're calling it in movement or the movement I, I, I hear which is you know probably the right word um, we can take this anywhere we can take it to wherever we want to go and and I like that I like that because I think sometimes in in men's football, I've just answered a question saying, what are the differences? Um, in men's football, we've probably, we probably have certain things that are set in stone, you know, oh, you've got to do these certain things, where I think the growth is, 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 is fantastic. 
but we've got to be careful on how we grow too. I think sometimes to just throw money at something and say, oh, you know, there's the, that, you know, we just got to throw money at and, and it'll grow. No, I think that we need to get the football right. We need to get, we need to get that on the pitch right to make it a product which people want to come and, 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 and are really excited to see. So for me, it always goes back to the football. Um, we've got to make the football the best it can be um, because that's the true, the true value of the product. You, of course, have a daughter yourself, correct? What does it mean to you and to her that obviously you're the face, well, one of the many faces of, of the women's football movement and obviously how you're progressing women's football? Oh, look, she's, uh, she's, she's brilliant. And, you know, one of the, one of the great things uh, about, and I probably should have answered the question um, at the start in terms of in my private life, I go home and we don't talk football. Like, I get right away from it. So I don't, I don't need to discuss the game or, you know, they'll tell me, oh, you won, you lost, and da-da-da, and, and that's it. And we laugh about it. So, so it's great, great from that perspective. But having a daughter, um, you know, she's, she's a real inspiration in terms of, She's part of her own her own growth and movement and knowledge of um, of uh, of women's football and women's issues and 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 so on. So I think so I think it's all tied in. I think it's all tied in with we've got a vehicle in terms of sport, but there's also a, an amazing movement happening out there of 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 what just should be normal. You know, women's rights are just an, a, should be a normal scenario of of life and. Uh, I don't see what the what the differences are from that perspective, but but Natasha is just an absolute gem in terms of you know standing up for for what she believes in, and so on. And and look, if I'm the face of it, well then all great, and uh, you know I'm proud to be. And in three words, what would you like women's football to be described in five to ten years time? Three words uh, that would describe women's football in five to ten years time. Um, I think top quality, I think, uh, you know, is, is one that's important. I, I want people to come and see just amazing athletes. Um, passionate, I think we have a passion in women's football that, that uh, is, is, is uh, beyond a lot of sports. And, and I think the, the last one is, is, is enjoyment. Enjoyment, I think, when you come to the stadium and watch a game of women's football, it's passionate, it's fun but it's top quality, it's top quality. And I think if we're talking just about women's football, I think they're three things that uh, encapsulate it, where it's, where it's going and where it should be. Brilliant. And Joe, just to, to wrap up, when you arrived, you joined Juventus, you said it was a pinch yourself moment because you, you're joining a club that you always supported as a kid. Yeah. You came here playing at the stadium, you also said, wow, this is another pinch yourself moment because it's a massive thing to be playing the Champions League game here at the stadium. Yeah. What, what, I mean, take us through those moments of what does it mean to you to be here, obviously, in those, having those scenarios and those pinch yourself moments, what other pinch yourself moments can you expect? Wow, um, yeah, arriving, arriving here and, um, you know, having all those, those amazing sort of, uh, I suppose, uh, levels of, uh, of emotion that, that encapsulate, you know, A, being a fan uh, of Italian descent, you know, being here now, at this at this amazing arena, and um, you know you you have these um, uh, what's the word I suppose these these sort of moments of of uh, being a kid again. You know, there's this just childlike. You know that those those feelings when you were going to your first game, or you know you're going to your first sort of uh, major event, or going to a football match as a kid. You know those those oh, I suppose those butterflies that you you get in your in your in your stomach. You know. That um, it's really hard to to sort of uh, capture in 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 this discussion. Um, look, I, I you know, for me, I, I only want to do what's best. You know, I really do. I, I really want to do what's best for for everyone, and I really want to. I really want to take this team to the next level, and and I want uh, every every supporter to come and come and watch this team, and, and really be proud of of what we're trying to achieve, both as a football team, a play, a football team, but as as role models, um, you know, for for football, for women's football, but for the club, and um, you know, I'm I'm going to savor every moment because I don't know how long this adventure is going to last, um, and and as I keep on saying, I have a I have an amazing privilege as as a fan to be here to be given this opportunity and, uh, and I want to make every event the event, as I said, uh, not, uh, not just a event. 
Looking back at the point of when you joined the team, how the team was, to now, and then looking forward to the future, how would you say the team has progressed and where to now next for, for the girls? Look, in taking over the team now and where it's and where it's going, um, you know, in all reality, the, the team was the, the structure of the team was already very very strong. Um, the job done by you know the management and the previous coach was was very very good, um, and and they had their objectives. They had where they wanted to achieve, and and they achieved those. You know, and uh, to be to be dominant domestically is where. Juventus has to be, it needs to be there, and that's probably the, the foundations of where it needs to stay. Um, and, and, and I'm gonna make sure that it does stay there from that perspective. Then a lot of structural background, you know, organizational uh, things that were put in place were, 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 were top class. And you know, I, I can honestly say that comparing to, to where I've been you know, around the world and so on and so on. So that first of all needs to be acknowledged. That needs to be acknowledged because the squad was already, you know, well put, well in place. Um, I was hired because um, I have I have a, uh, an idea of the way the game should be played. I was hired because uh, I believe in these ideas, and I believe that there is a there is a, a marriage of the two of what's there now and bringing in some new ideas. And and I can only say that with a lot of probably confusion, poor Italian. Um, uh, new ideas, new new ways of thinking, but also create, understanding that we're creating bases to go forward. Um, both uh, both the players, the staff, and the and, and everyone around has been absolutely amazing in terms of the way they've taken to this new idea. The idea was obviously to to, to bridge the gap in Europe and bring that closer. And uh, you know, two games, whether we take two games as as a, as a, as an indication against two of the, the top, you know, they're, they're in the top two of the top four in the world. Um, or we could honestly say that now we're, we're on this, on this, this learning curve. Um, but um, there's nothing saying that, uh, that there's an opportunity for us to really, really do well in, in the coming years in Europe. And that's where I think we need to be. Um, the one thing that, that I have to add is that I, I, I just want, you know, uh, everyone to believe because there was a, there was a lot of doubt in terms of um, you know in Europe uh, you know we're playing Chelsea we're playing Wolfsburg you know um, and the biggest thing to me was to to make make everyone believe that we can do it and um, I think just through the the courage and the behaviour and the and the passion that we've shown that's starting to now grow. Brilliant, thank you. That's a wrap. Ci siamo.